Hey, hey, Bill Nye, the science guy here, and I'd like to talk to you about water. I'm not trying to shock anybody, but water is pretty important stuff. And as we, and by we I mean humans, take over more and more of the planet, it becomes more and more important to protect our water resources. Now we can't stop progress. I mean, we still need to provide homes for people to live in, offices for people to work in, and places for people to shop. But once we start bulldozing land to construct these buildings, we expose a lot of soil, which can and often does end up in our lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans. Here's the problem. This is an eighth of an inch of soil. No big deal, right? But an eighth of an inch of soil eroded from one acre of land comes out to about 25 tons of sediment. And that's just from one acre. How would you like it if someone dumped 25 tons of dirt on your house or in your swimming pool? <laughs> but a commercial development can easily cover a hundred or even a thousand acres. And that could mean a whopping 25,000 tons of sediment being dumped into nearby lakes and streams. Now, if you're something small, like, say, a salmon egg, and all of a sudden 25,000 tons of sediment are dumped on top of you, well, I can't say I like your chances. And that's just from the first eighth of an inch of soil. The more soil that gets eroded, the worse it gets. So why do we care? Because this is the only environment we've got, and protecting it is the right thing to do. But for those who need a little more, how should I put it, motivation to do the right thing, Congress enacted the Clean Water Act and the Endangered Species Act, so everybody has to play by the same rules. Now this is serious stuff, and it's getting more serious every day. Now I'm not saying that everyone's ignoring the problem. Good contractors have been taking steps for years to reduce the amount of dirt that runs off of their work sites. The problem, though, is that the old methods just aren't good enough to meet the standards for clean water that people today expect. Even a little pollution over a long time ends up being a lot of pollution. Well, it turns out there are ways to prevent this. None of them are magic, just applied common sense and what else? Science, of course. Right, Tom? You're right, Bill. Common sense, science, and engineering. Hi, I'm Tom Laguerre one of the founders of Clearwater Compliance Services. Our techs do this stuff every day and they use a variety of technologies to get the job done. Each has its place, but there's one technology in particular, Bill, that we're very excited about. You know how we use filters to keep the water in our swimming pools and aquariums clean? Well, we can do the same thing to clean the rainwater from construction sites. Of course, these filters have to be much bigger and more efficient because we're dealing with a lot more water and a lot more dirt. To get as much dirt out as possible, we use a liquid filter aid in the process, something to make the filters work better. One of the best filter aids available to us today is called Kytosan Acetate, and Kytosan is made from, believe it or not, crabs! I know, ground up crab shells. We even eat Kytosan to reduce the absorption of fats in our stomachs and to lubricate our joints. Now for water treatment, they use a higher grade of the material with bigger molecules, but it's basically the same thing. When they add the chitosan, it acts like a magnet to hold together the tiny dirt particles suspended in the water so the particles can't sneak through the filters. How cool is that? You gotta see this. Now this is the kind of water that you might find running off of a typical construction site. It's pretty cloudy. Now if you were a fish living in a stream nearby, it wouldn't be long before your neighborhood turned into a pretty bad one. But watch what happens when we add a little chitosan to the mixture. The particles start to stick together up here at the top. But here's a magnetic stirrer. So we'll set that in the beaker and give it a spin. Now on a construction site, this doesn't happen in beakers. I mean, we're dealing with potentially millions of gallons of water. And budgeting for that many beakers could break the bank. Instead, they use large ponds, pipes, and filters, all working together to make sure that water gets cleaned the way it's supposed to. So what's happening on a small scale in this beaker can happen on a much larger scale on a job site. And that's what people at Clearwater do. They'll come to your construction site, they'll set up, and they'll turn your gooey, muddy water 
into clear water, the kind of water a fish wouldn't mind living in. So this is what it looks like in the real world. In many ways, this is cleaner than drinking water, and everybody can be happy about that. The project owners can be happy that their work isn't polluting the environment. The neighbor folks can be happy that the rivers and streams around here will be as clean for their grandchildren as they are today. And the fish can be happy that no one's dumping dirt on their heads. It's a win, win, win. Treating stormwater runoff this way costs money, sometimes a lot of money. But not treating the water can actually cost you more. Repairing downstream damage from releasing dirty water can cost hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars. Fines for violation of water quality standards can be high in terms of both money and lost time. In fact, any construction delay related to stormwater quality can cost a business lost profits that will never be recovered. And by the way, if we don't act responsibly, we'll continue to lose habitat and degrade our water resources. At some point, no amount of money will be able to fix that. Maintaining the quality of our water resources is too important to be left to chance. And some people say that treating water runoff on a construction site isn't rocket science. And they're right. Actually, it's somewhat less predictable than rocket science. So this work should be really left to the professionals. As I said, this is important stuff. I mean, after all, someday maybe we'll be running our cars with alternative fuels or we'll be using alternative energy sources. But there'll never be an alternative for clean water.